Hi, it's attorney Jamie Miller from the Miller Law Chronicle podcast. Today, we have a very special podcast, and we're going to be welcoming in Ginny Gendelman, the executive director of the Milwaukee Jewish Free Loan. So you may be wondering why the Miller Law Chronicles is talking to Ginny Gendelman today. Well, as a bankruptcy lawyer, and as someone that helps individuals who are having financial struggles, I find it very important when people come to Miller & Miller that I have the ability to offer options and options other than filing bankruptcy. And for that reason, Jenny Gendelman is joining us today because over the years, we've referred many clients to the Milwaukee Jewish Free Loan. The Milwaukee Jewish Free Loan is a not-for-profit organization in Milwaukee that lends money to anyone in the community with no interest and really no strings attached. So in theory, you could borrow $3,600, pay it back for 36 months for $100 a month. Now compare that to these crazy payday loans and auto title loans where you're paying 60 or 16 or 26 or whatever it is, very large interest rates. With the Milwaukee Jewish Free Loan, it truly is interest free. And that's why I wanted to bring on Ginny Gendelman to discuss her organization and the number of people that they are currently helping in our community. Thanks for listening in. I hope you like this podcast and I'd ask you to like us and follow us on Google Podcasts, on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify, on YouTube, anywhere that you find your podcast, please subscribe. It allows us to continue to bring free, wonderful content to our clients and to our community. Thank you so much. Welcome to another edition of the Miller Law Chronicles. Today we have a very special episode that, that means a lot to me. I'm attorney Jamie Miller, and today I have the privilege of diving into a very inspiring conversation with a remarkable individual and good friend who has made and continues to make a significant impact in our Milwaukee community. Our guest today is none other than Ginny Gendelman. Ginny is the founding individual and current executive director of the Milwaukee Jewish Free Loan. Sadly, Ginny, or excitedly for Ginny, Ginny is going to be retiring soon. We'll talk about that also. But today we're really going to spend some time and uh, discuss and talk about her impact on the Milwaukee Jewish Free Loan in, in Milwaukee. And we're going to explore her incredible journey with this organization that really started from not too much to a, a huge and just really important organization that it is today. We'll talk about its mission and the invaluable assistance that it provides to those in our community in need. Um, we'll also discuss how the Milwaukee Jewish Free Loan is positively influenced our community, really one life at a time. Um, whether you're passionate about philanthropy or legal empowerment or community, develop, community development, I think you'll see that this will be uh, a source of inspirational inspiration and valuable insight. So without further ado, let's embark on this enlightening journey and learn a little bit about Ginny. And thank you for joining us today. I'm, I'm really excited that you, you took the time during your busy schedule to, to talk today. Sure. I'm very happy to be here. Thanks for having me. It's awesome. So awesome. So tell me a little bit about Ginny Gendelman and, and your journey where it started. We both have roots in Ohio, which has always kind of pulled us together, but just give me a little bit of background. It's true. Well, I was born in Ohio. And then I, after a lot of different things happened in my life, ended up in California and got married and had to young girls. And while living in Los Angeles, I was working as an architect and I learned about the Jewish free load in Los Angeles. And I thought it was such a great concept, such a great organization, but I had no time to volunteer. I had two 
baby girls and was working more than full time in, in running an architecture firm in Los Angeles. And I just always thought it was a great idea, but there wasn't the opportunity there. Then my husband, who was born and raised in Milwaukee, had an opportunity for a job back here. And so we moved back to Milwaukee, which was great because all of our family was here. And so the girls would have family, grandparents, aunts and uncles and cousins. And so we moved back to Milwaukee. I was very excited to finally be able to volunteer for the local free loan. But when we got to Milwaukee, we found out that there was not one in Milwaukee. So over time, I got involved in the community. And after doing some other volunteer work with other organizations in Milwaukee, I found that this community would support a free loan. And so we embarked on the journey of starting one. So that's kind so of the I, beginning. Did you work with the free loan when you were in California or just realized there was one in California? No, I just heard about it all the time. They advertised on NPR and they would interview the executive director, Mark Meltzer, at that time from time to time. And so I heard several interviews about the organization and just thought it was a great way to help people in the community. And so, like I said, I always wanted to get involved, but didn't have the time when I was living in California. Right. And so in the early 2000s or around 2005 or six, you guys moved to Milwaukee. Was it about that time? 2006. Yeah, 2006. 2006. And full disclosure, I, I know that because Jenny and her wonderful family moved in across the street um, from us, which is really remarkable and wonderful because it's it's what allowed me get to get to know Jenny and her, her wonderful family, but also to learn a lot about her dream of the Milwaukee Jewish Free Loan and um, be part of the organization as a board member for memory, for, for many years. But Tell me a little bit about, you know, the, the, I think the original name, I think is the Hebrew free loan, but a little bit about the Milwaukee Jewish free loan and what the whole concept is. What is it exactly? Sure, sure. Well, and, and the original name of the Milwaukee Jewish free loan was always Milwaukee Jewish free loan association. But I think you're referring to the international association, which was international association of Hebrew free loans. And then Sometime after 2009, we decided, I was on the executive committee, we decided to change it from Hebrew to Jewish, mainly because most of the member agencies had the word Hebrew in, or had the word Jewish in their name, not the word Hebrew. So it was more representative of the larger percentage of agencies. But the International Association, so the International Association of Jewish Free Loans has over 50 members. Um, most of them are in the United States, but there are some in Canada and throughout other countries in the world. The largest one is in Jerusalem, but there are like probably 10 in Canada and about 40 in the United States. And it's an umbrella organization that that brings together each of these agencies because we all do the same thing, but we all do it slightly differently. So each organization is independent, but it's an organization that, that brings us together to learn from each other. We have a conference once a year and it's a way to have colleagues in other cities because typically these are small organizations that are kind of running independently within their own community. Okay. And, and what year was Milwaukee Jewish Free Loan established? In 2009. Okay. And, and tell me an overview about what the concept is of the Jewish Free Loan. I mean, basically it's a way to help people with, by offering a hand up instead of a handout. It's a way to, to help someone while enabling them to maintain, I don't want to say enabling, but helping people to resolve their own financial situation while still maintaining their dignity, not forcing them to take charity. We're empowering them and we're doing it in a way that just is a, it makes it possible for them to be successful in resolving their own financial situation independently without having to take any, any charity, without having to become dependent on any, any social services. And it's a great, the concept is great because we reuse the same money over and over again to help more and more people. Right. And so the, the magic word, as, you're, as you think about Milwaukee Jewish Free Loan is free, what, what does that refer to? Well, it's interest-free so and fee-free. We don't charge any interest or any fees at all. As I said, we, we just loan the same money out over and over. So basically we loan money out and people pay it back. And as they pay it back, those payments are used to make other loans to help other individuals in the community. 
And so if someone is applying for a loan, there's really no cost at all to the applicant and the borrower. Not at all. There are no applica- there's no application fee. There are no fees at all. And we, we loan, as I said, we loan the money and then they pay it back. And then we use that money to help the next person. There are no costs associated with it at all. Matter of fact, people save money because it's a great alternative to the other options they might consider, which could be payday loans or just high interest credit cards or other bank loans that would charge them interest. So we're actually saving them money while they're in the process of resolving whatever financial situation they need to resolve. And I appreciate you saying that so much that this is an alternative to, you know, kind of the lending predators that are out there that really take advantage of people in their most neat, you know, largest time of need, whether it's for, you know, utility disconnection to help keep on their utilities or whether it's, you know, they're behind on a car payment or behind a mortgage payment, the free loan really is there for them and an interest-free basis and a free basis to really help them, you know, get that fresh start that they need. It's remarkable. Dealing with things in the bankruptcy world, I just see the cycle, really the cycle of poverty that, that people get in, you know, they, their car breaks down and then they need to get a new car and they need to take out a high interest loan. So I appreciate and respect so much, um, where the free loan, you know, fits in, in our, in our lending community. But tell me a little bit about the uh, Milwaukee Jewish free loan is a not-for-profit and it, it operates under a mission or vision, but tell me a little bit about what that mission is. Yeah. I mean, the mission is, is that as we are inspired by Jewish values, we empower people that have temporary financial needs to achieve their goals by offering interest-free loans on a non-sectarian basis. That, that really is, we keep it that simple. That, that is the mission. Um, so you don't need to be Jewish. Um, not at all. Not at all. We are a Jewish organization in that we are Jewish. And although not all of us, because even our board is very diverse, but we make interest-free loans to help because that's based on Jewish values and it's inspired by Jewish values as a way to help people without charging interest but we are helping the entire community. And one of having been involved with the free loan for many years, one of the, I think a misunderstanding that people have is that you have to be Jewish to take a loan from the Milwaukee Jewish free loan, which is just the farthest thing from the truth. But what would you say, what percentage of current borrowers are not Jewish at this time? It's funny because typically the only people that think you have to be Jewish to get a loan are Jewish people. <laughs> we get calls every day from people who are not Jewish and they know that they don't need to be Jewish to get a loan because we we do all kinds of outreach into the community and we wouldn't be reaching out to their church or their community center if they had to be Jewish. So it's really more often Jewish donors who want to help the whole community and are asking questions about our organization that ask us if people have to be Jewish. And of course we tell them that they don't. Our loans, we don't ask if people are Jewish or not, but a lot of times you can tell because someone will mention if they're a member of a synagogue or if their kid goes to a Jewish school or, or for whatever they might mention. So we, we only keep track when we know because they've told us, but to, it's approximately 25% of our loans go to Jewish borrowers, Jewish clients, and 75% are not Jewish. Great. And then I I wanted to chat with you today and take this opportunity to have a discussion about MJFLA um, because you're retiring and you're moving on to a different time in your life and different things. And I kind of wanted to talk with you before you left because I wanted to celebrate the amazing things that you've done and the amazing things that you've accomplished. And I, I want to look back because you are the executive director of MJFLA, but you're also an entrepreneur. Um, you started this, it is a not-for-profit, but it, it is a business and has responsibilities. It has responsibilities to the community and responsibilities to borrowers and responsibilities to a board. And kind of take me back to what year we you started the fund and, and how you got it started. 
Sure, sure, I'd be happy to. Yeah, at the beginning of 2009, after, as I mentioned, I, I had volunteered in some other capacities in Milwaukee and gotten to know the community and the people that make up the community. At the beginning of 2009, I started talking with people about the idea of starting a free loan in Milwaukee. Almost no one in Milwaukee had ever heard of a Jewish free loan, so it was an education process, not only for them, but also for me, because I did begin researching all of the other agencies in the International Association, and I went to a couple of the other cities and met with them. I talked with many of them on the phone. I read every page of every website of every one of the, of the members of the International Association. And after doing all that research and meeting with those people, meeting with people in the community, I found that people were interested and people wanted to support this concept and wanted to have a free loan in Milwaukee. So in May of 2009, we had a parlor meeting and invited 36 people that were interested in being potential supporters of the organization. And we had the, I had the president of the International Association, who at that time was in Detroit. He was the executive director of the Free Loan in Detroit. He came and we presented to the 36 people that we invited and shared all the information with them about what it would look like if we started a Free Loan in Milwaukee. And by the end of that meeting, we had six couples that offer to give initial funds to establish the loan fund. So, and, and actually all of the people that were in that meeting recently, was, I was asked to look at who all came to that meeting and I did. And all the people that attended that meeting are still supporters today, 15 years later. That's remarkable. So you started in about 2009 from nothing and you, you got about what, 60,000 in seed yeah. money mm -hmm. to start the free loan. And Tell us about, if you can, you know, kind of where the loan is now, approximately how much is in the load fund, the number of lives that you're impacting. Really just curious to hear about that. Yeah, I mean, we have grown a lot over the last 15 years. After starting with $60,000, now as of this summer, we actually two years ahead of schedule, we reached our goal of reaching over a million dollars in the loan fund. So we're very excited to, uh, and I'm very excited since this is my last year to have reached that milestone at this point, but we have, so we have a million dollars in the fund and we have in recent years, we've been doubling the number of loans that we've made each year. This year, we've already loaned over $300,000 and you know, already surpassed last year. We typically have about 80% of the funds out in the community and we're always working to increase that percentage. And by the end of this year, we, have, we will have loaned over $2 million since we made that first loan back in 2009. That's remarkable. And the, the money that is in the fund is, is all from private donors that have been inspired by the mission of MJFLA. Right. Private donations and some small grants. We have, you know, over the years, we've grown the fund by reaching out to major donors and just individuals in the community to increase the dollars in the fund. And then at the end of each year, whatever operating money we had left over, we were able to grow the fund even more by putting that into the fund. Um, and so we have built this fund that we've been able to use. And, and when you think about it, we started with $60,000 and just this year we've increased the fund quite a bit, but we've loaned over $2 million. So each of those dollars that we have has been loaned many times and come back in and been loaned out again. And how many borrowers over the, what, the last 14 years do you think you've impacted? Well, we've made 700 loans. We're actually at 698 loans as of today. So we're at 700 loans. And, you know, so that means we've impacted over 7,000 lives because, you know, for each loan that we make, it affects their family, it affects their employer, it affects their employees, depending on their situation. So it doesn't affect just the person that borrows the money, it affects multiple people with each loan. So we're definitely making a difference in thousands of lives in the community. Right. If you take yourself back to 2009 and you look where the free loan is in 2023, did you ever see it growing to this level? 
You know, I, I recently, because now we've hired a new executive director and we could talk more about that, but in, in the process of going through everything this year and and in the process of bringing her up to speed on everything, including the history of the Milwaukee Jewish Free Loan, I had the opportunity to go back and read through the business plan that I wrote in 2009 that, that we wrote. And it's it's fun to look back at it because we did plan for this type of growth. We did plan for this organization to grow and be successful and, and help this many people in the community. When you look at the numbers that, that we projected in the business plan, it didn't go exactly how we thought it would go in terms of numbers. But when you look at our plan and what we did, it really all turned out pretty much how we thought it was going to go. So it's, it's exciting to look back at that and kind of be I don't usually use the word proud, but kind of proud of what we've done. I mean, I am proud of what we've done, that's for sure. And even though we thought when we wrote the business plan that we would make more loans sooner, and it, and it was slower going at first than we thought it would be, now we're, we're at numbers that we're very proud of in terms of, of the number of people that we've helped in the community. That is just remarkable. And I know one of the areas of growth and focus has been to create different types of loan funds that are directed at specific people in specific situations. But can you go into a little bit about what the different loan funds are and what their purposes are? Is Sure, sure. I mean, we make loans to help with all different types of things. You know, we help with car repairs and we help people with rent and security deposits so they can move. We help with legal fees and medical and dental fees. A lot of the time we're just helping people to catch up on bills. You know, some people are working full time and paying their bills every month, but they're paying the minimums on their debts. And there's a debt cycle that they're never going to be able to escape from, even though they're fully employed and paying all their bills. So we can help them to escape that debt cycle. Um, some of our clients are doing really well financially, but they have a cash flow issue. Um, for example, you know, we had one family that had a daughter that was starting veterinary school and um, she, they had twins that were also simultaneously beginning their freshman year of college. And so having three children in college at the same time, it, it, it was a challenge for them, even though they're both working and, and made a good income. So there are so many different ways that we can help. We have general funds that help with personal loans and essentials that people need. You know, we consider essentials, you know, like, making sure that their utilities are, are keep, you know, they can keep their lights on and their heat on in the winter um, and that they can, they don't have to make a choice between paying their bills and buying groceries, you know, so general and personal loans to help with essentials and other general needs. Um, but then we also make student loans, as I mentioned, that one student loan. Um, and we have specific funds for things like growing families a few years ago, we established a fund to help with adoption and fertility treatment and surrogacy. We have a green home improvements loan that, that makes it possible for people who are doing repairs on their home to, to maybe spend a little bit more to buy better insulated windows or to what's a lot of times when they're already doing a project, it's a good opportunity to, to be able to add solar panels on your roof, which can lower your utility bills. So we have a loan fund for that. And most recently, and I'm very excited about this year, we have a credit improvement loan fund that using those funds, we are helping people to improve their credit in order to qualify for a mortgage so that they can stop renting and begin to climb out of poverty and build generational wealth. So that's very exciting. So we have a lot of different funds that have been established over the years to help in different ways while still doing basically the same thing. It's still interest-free money that we're loaning out and they're paying it back. But it empowers them to do different things with the money. Yeah, one, one of the exciting um, funds that really interests me is the Growing Family Fund. Um, mm -hmm. tell, tell me about, I, I'm just a little inside baseball, but I, I'm excited uh, to know that you had really just an exciting result from the Growing Family Funds this year. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, the first MJ Philly baby was born in July. So that was very exciting. We have helped several people with adoption and we've helped some people with fertility treatments. And in this case, it was a family that wanted, had always wanted to have three children and they had two children, but unfortunately with the second child, there were some complications and they were not able to have a third child. 
but they were able to, with a surrogate, have someone carry their child for them. But that's, you know, just like adoption and, and fertility treatment, surrogacy is very expensive. And this was a situation where we were able to make a loan so that they were able to work with the surrogate and have that third child. So they're, they're very grateful. And I know that she's posted all over Facebook and everywhere that she's so grateful to MJFLA for helping them. And, and that was really nice, but we were really glad to be able to, to help make that happen. It's so expensive for people when they're trying, you know, if some people are, are forced to take one of those routes to be able to, to have children and grow their family. And I'm so glad we can help with that. Yeah, that, that was certainly a, a highlight from, from this year and something that will not soon, you know, be forgotten. The other story from this year that was really struck me is the student from Ukraine that MJFLA helped. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Yeah. We, as I mentioned, we have student loan funds that help students to pay tuition and the other costs of attendance. Our funds are really well set up to be able to fill that gap for people. You know, people have money saved for school and they typically people have a gap between the amount that they have in resources and their cost of attendance. And so our loans of $5,000 per year are able to fill that gap. This situation that you mentioned was a little bit different because it was not only a student loan, but it was also really a personal loan. We had someone come to us who was referred actually by one of our donors because they were aware of our program. This is a student who was at UW Green Bay and she had been in Green Bay as a an exchange student for, or an international student for one semester. But during the time that she was here, the war broke out in Ukraine and she wasn't able to go back. And the UW system, the UW school allowed her to stay indefinitely for time. So as time was going on, she was not able to even be in contact with her family. She's 19 years old. This was really hard for her. And yet, so she was here at school and then eventually she was told that she was going to have to go back to Ukraine. And that was where this donor who was aware of her and actually was a sponsor for her or became a sponsor for her, became aware of her situation and referred her to us so that we could make a loan because if she was able to get a different type of visa, then she could stay and would not be deported back to Ukraine. Sometime during that process of communicating with us and applying for the loan, finally she was able to communicate with her family that all had been relocated to a refugee camp in France. They weren't even in the UK anymore, but she was still going to be deported back to Ukraine unless she could acquire this different visa so that she could stay. And so we were able to make the loan so that she could stay here in the United States and stay in Wisconsin at UW Green Bay. and continue her studies. She's a computer science major and she was able to stay thanks to our loan and not be deported. So it was not only a student loan, but really a humanitarian loan. And we're really happy to be able to help. The, the, those are two just r remarkable stories. And one of the funds that um, I'm connected with is the employee employer loan fund, which allows employers like Miller & Miller to be able to refer employees to FLA to get interest-free loans. And it's a remarkable opportunity for employers because it can be a, a challenging conversation to have with employees on borrowing money. And as an employer, I see it all the time and I see people knocking on my doors, my car broke down, or I can't pay my We Energy bill, or I don't have money to you know, sign my kid up for hockey this year. And to, I, I'm a lawyer and I'm an employer, but I'm not a, in the lending business and it can be awkward. And I'm grateful to the free loan for the opportunity to say, hey, you know, Joe, Karen, Doug, whatever, give the free loan a call and they will set you up with, with the loan and help you out. And as an employer, I'm able to guarantee the loan so that MJFLA is protected, but, and that my employee is able to get the funds that they need, but then I'm out of it, right? I'm just, I don't have to worry about it. And it's just, it's very valuable. Is, are there a couple or is there an employee loan fund that you can loan that was made previously that 
you can think about that is a story about how you helped somebody who was, you know, working at, in, at a local employer. Sure. I mean, there are multiple stories I can share. I also just do want to mention before even getting to a story that, that we, we love being able to work with employers. It's really a win-win for the employers like you and the employee because it does enable you to not have to make that cash advance to your employee. It's a great way for you to be able to help because you care about your employees, you've invested in them and you want to keep them, but they're struggling. And if, and if they can't resolve their situation, they might not even be able to stay in their job. So it's a great way to not only help the employee, but also the employer. And, and it lowers absenteeism and it lower, it means less turnover for you. It means less overtime for your other employees covering for someone who can't be in the office and, and improved morale. We've seen that in, in every case. We have employers that we make loans to, or we have employers that we work with that we make loans to their employees on an individual basis. So the employer will decide which employees at which, whenever they need help that they, they might guarantee a loan for, and they might not always guarantee a loan for each employee. Maybe they want them to have been working for them for at least a year or something like that. But, and then we also have employers that we work with that provide it as a benefit to all their employees, as a benefit of employment, that this is an opportunity that's available to them if they ever need a loan, that re, you know, rather than coming to the employer and asking for that, that help, that they know that this is an option for them. And it's been a great way for MJ Philly to help more people in the community. So I really love this program. As far as as loans that we've made, you know, we've made lots of loans to to people who needed to move. And I can't really think of a specific case of one of those. But one situation was an employer that had an employee who needed to be able to get to work and didn't have her own car. So she was getting rides all the time from people to get to where she needed to go. And we were able to make a loan so she could get a car and, and she, she made a video for us and sent it to us of her with her new car because she was so excited to be able to show us that now she could drive herself to work and, and be able to take care of, of the clients that she needed to take care of without having to get rides from other people to and from everywhere she needed to go. But it, it's typically, you know, our, it's not, we're not talking about adoption loans or student loans in this case, we're talking about personal loans, but, but we've made all types of loans to help employees. And the, the great thing about it was then, then it really helped the employer as well. And for us, it's great because the, the payments are typically received, we receive their payments through payroll deduction so that it's easier for the employee to make their payments. And also it's just been really great because the employees don't have to have co-signers, um, which we haven't talked about yet, but our loans do require co-signers. And when it's an employee loan, then their loan is guaranteed by their employer, either the employer as an individual or with some employers, we have a fund set up for their company or their organization. And then the fund acts as the guarantor. So they don't have to go and ask their mother or their brother or their neighbor to be their co-signer on their loan. Right. And, and, and that gets us into what the qualifications are for one of these loans. And maybe you can speak to that a little bit. Sure, sure. So with all of our loans, the basic requirements are that the the applicant needs to have income to be able to pay the loan back and they have to have guarantors, co-signers, we call them guarantors. We want to make sure that they have sufficient income to pay the loan back because we don't want to put them in a worse situation of having another debt that they can't pay. So when they submit an application, which is done on our website, we ask them about their income and we ask them about their other monthly expenses so that we can work with them to make sure that they can afford the loan, first of all. And then also, if the loan's approved, we work with them to come up with a payment amount that's comfortable for them. So we look at how much they have left over each month and make sure that they can afford the loan. And we don't want to put them into a, into a you know, bad situation of, of being so tight that if anything else happens, they won't be able to, to take care of it. So we make sure that the loan really works for them and we make sure to set them up for success, not only with paying off their immediate debt, but also in repaying the loan. Can you describe a typical loan, 500, 1,000? What's a typical loan look like and what's the payment period and monthly payment look like? Sure, sure. So for a general, like a personal loan, the average loan is about $2,200. Typically, loans are anywhere from $500 to the maximum is $5,000. And as far as how it works, you know, basically we're, we're making the loan and then they're paying it off. Typically, 
within three years. That's the typical, the, the longest period that we would want to have someone have a loan. Nobody really wants to have a loan out for longer than that anyway. And so depending on what they can afford to pay per month, we work with them to set up a payment plan. But the goal is to have it paid off three years maximum. And so if someone has a, a loan, just throwing a number out there, $3,600, in theory, they could pay that back a hundred dollars a month over thirty six months. Right. If if someone had a thirty six hundred dollar credit card and they were paying off that credit card over thirty six months at or a hundred dollars a month, it would probably take a lifetime to pay back that loan with the crazy twenty two percent, twenty five percent interest rates. Right. But with a Milwaukee Jewish free loan, a thirty six hundred dollar loan, a hundred dollar a month payment every dollar of that hundred dollars is going to pay back that loan is that correct absolutely yeah it's it's completely different if there's no interest involved they're just they're just paying that off so so when we help someone to pay off some of their debts and then they pay us back it is kind of a consolidation loan if they're taking three different credit cards and paying those off and paying us instead we're, we're paying off those three debts and then they are just going to you know, let's say it adds up to twenty five hundred dollars. I'm going to pay that back over the next two and a half years. No interest. It's just it's just a great way for them to be able be able to escape from under that debt and and pay it off completely. And then it doesn't cost them anything to pay us back. They just pay it off monthly. Right. And one one of the challenges that potential borrower borrowers have is finding two co-signers. And to speak to that a little bit. And you know what. The MJ, what MJFA can do to help find co-signers to help get around that qualification if, if it's possible. Yeah. Yeah. There's really no way around it. It is a requirement for all of our loans. And that is consistent across the entire um, International Association of Jewish Free Loans. That That's how this program works. Co-signers are required. We when we have someone contact us and we, you know, they'll ask what the requirements are. And when we explain that that's one of the requirements, a lot of times people will just say they don't have anyone that they could ask or they don't want to ask anyone. So it's definitely the hardest thing in terms of, of my job is having to, you know, tell people, well, we may not be the right, you know, MJFLA might not be the right option in your situation if, if they really have no one that they can ask. And we do have a, you know, have a list of other referrals that we'll make for them and try to help them to find another option that will that will help them with their need. But for people that are willing and able to ask people to co-sign for them, the co-signer fills out, the guarantor fills out an application with their basic information, and we do run a credit report to make sure that they qualify. We want to make sure that the guarantors are financially stable. So they need to have a good credit history and not have anything in collections because there's no point in asking someone to guarantee someone else's loan if they're struggling themselves financially. So we do check and make sure that they are in a good financial position to be able to guarantee the loan. And, and what, what's the loan repayment rate? It you would seem, you know, it would seem like it was, it would be high with two co-signers, but speak to that a little bit. Well, we, I mean, MJFLA has a 99.6% repayment rate, and we have from the very beginning. As a matter of fact, to be an accredited member of the International Association, you need to have at least a 98% repayment rate. But ours has always been over 99.5%. And that's because we, we do work really hard to make sure that we're making good loans, that we're making loans that will be successful, not only in helping people with whatever their need is, but in, in them being successful in repaying the loan. People come to us because they want to solve their own situation. They want to remain independent. They don't want to take charity. They want to be self-sufficient. And we make the loan and make sure that it's a loan that will work for them, that they will be successful in. And they, they really did come to us because they wanted a loan. They didn't want charity. And so they want to pay it back. And so we are successful because we set it up in a way that that is doing exactly that. We're making sure that they're going to be successful and we're not, we're, we're offering them a hand up when they need it. We're not offering a handout. It's not charity. It's not a grant. It's not money that they don't intend to pay back. And th I think that's why it works. Right. And, and you and, and your team do a great job of building relationships with people and helping people, whether, you know, we can get them a loan or not you are still having conversations, giving different resources, but for those people that 
are getting the loans, I think they understand the mission, they understand the vision, they understand that the money that they're given and lent or, or that they receive is being recycled and it's being reused. Yeah. And that if, if they don't pay back that money, they understand that someone else isn't going to have the use of that money down the road. And that that repayment rate, yes, the guarantors are, are very important, but the borrowers themselves are motivated to pay it back because they're grateful at the opportunity and they want to see others others do it. So I, Exactly. And we almost never go to a guarantor for any repayment on a loan. It's less than 5% of the time across the, the International Association and, and my own my own statistics of just asking the other free loans what percentage of the time they go to their guarantors for help with repayment. Everyone's told me less than 10% of the time. For us, it has been less than 5% of the time. Really, most of the time we go to a guarantor when we can't get a hold of someone because they've gotten a new cell phone and they didn't call us and tell us their new number. Most of the time, that's that's what we end up being happy that we have the guarantors for is that we can reach out to them. We have another person to reach out to in case we can't reach the client if something, you know, if they miss a payment and we need to contact them. So it's great to have the guarantors, but almost none of the time, very rarely do we have a guarantor actually required to make any payments on a loan. Right. And if someone's interested in applying for a loan through Milwaukee Jewish Free Loan, tell us how they would do that. So typically people will call first or they'll just go right to the website. If they call, we'll explain the information to them and then send them to the website. But either way, they end up submitting an application right on our website. And we have multiple applications for them to choose from if it's a personal loan or a student loan or an adoption loan, for example. And so the information is right there on each page of the website explaining the requirements for that loan. And then they can submit the application right from there. Um, we do ask them to also provide income, as I mentioned, income information. And so we ask for copies of recent pay stubs and copies of recent bank statements, just so we can get a fuller picture of their financial situation. When they're applying for a loan, for example, an adoption loan, we also want to get an idea of where they are in the process, because that can be a very long, in addition to being an expensive process, it can be a very long process. And so after working with multiple adoption agencies, we've determined that the best time in that process to make the loan is after they have a completed home study. So we'll ask them for that. If someone is doing home repairs, we'll ask them for a copy of their quote from their, their contractor. So there are some loans for which we will ask for different additional information, but the basic application is, is right on the website for people to, to fill out and submit. If the applicant gets you all the information that you need and they get the co-signers and maybe they have an emergency to prevent a utility disconnection, for instance, how quickly can you get the, the money out into the community and into the borrower's hands? We're really fast. We can turn over a loan. I mean, we've done it same day when we needed to for a, a true emergency. We typically tell people that once we get everything from them, their application and their other documents and their guarantor applications, that it takes one or two days to get their loan approved. And we're consistent with that timeline. Um, but when we do have someone, we had someone recently, it was earlier this year, that their Apple credit card, they accidentally charged their account twice for their automatic monthly payment. And so the person was overdrawn on their bank account and it was going to take several days. They'd already been dealing with it for like five days trying to get Apple, just like it could have been Capital One or any credit card company, but the credit card company needed to reverse the charge and it was taking some time to get that process completed. But in the meantime, she was overdrawn on her bank account and she was getting a $34 charge each day for being overdrawn. That was a financial emergency. She could not afford to have another $34 taken out each additional day while she was trying to get this resolved. So we made a loan same day to be able to get money into her bank account to cover those charges until she was going to be able to get reimbursed. And we just, we got the loan approved and met her at her bank with a cashier's check to deposit into her account. Right. So MJFLA started in 09 with $60,000 loan funds up to a million dollars, lent out over $2 million, impacted thousands of people's lives, and now you're retiring. Tell me what, <laughs> tell me what led to that decision. 
that's true. Well, it's been 15 years. It's time. <laughs> It's time. And, you know, it, it's been a whole year of working with the board and creating a transition plan and downloading everything from my brain into an operations manual that would be a, a complete comprehensive resource for the next leader of the organization to be able to use. It's been a process of trying to find the right person to take over because this is my baby. I created this organization and I didn't want to just find someone who's going to, you know, watch it for a while. I want someone who's going to adopt it and take it forward into the future. So it took some time to interview people and find the right person. And I'm very happy to say that we have hired Anna Koenig to be the new executive director. She started in September and she's fantastic. And she and I have been working together since the beginning of September. And we'll, we'll have a total of, of three months of overlap before I finish up at the end of November. But that it's it's going to be really good for the organization. It's been it's been great. I have loved it. I have loved, as, as you mentioned, I've been kind of an entrepreneur. It's been a startup. You know, I, I've, I've worked 360 days a year for the last 15 years <laughs> running this organization. And it's time for me to hand it off to the next person. And we'll also be hiring a part time person to work with her. So I'm very excited to see to see how MJFLA continues and grows in the in the future. And I'll still be around as a resource, you know, if, if they need me and it's, it's time and I'm, I'm happy about it. It's, it's the right thing at the right time. And it'll be really good for the organization. That's, that's just, it's great. And the future is just really bright. You are a community asset. MJFLA is a remarkable organization that helps so many people. And I'm so grateful that you were willing and able to spend the time with us today and spend the time with my listeners. It's a, being a, uh, you know, a lawyer that, that helps people in financial distress. I, I always find it important when people come in and they're behind in their bills to be able to offer options. I'm not one to tell people what to do. I like to give people options and help them make decisions that are best for their family. And I'm, I'm grateful that MJFLA has been part of my life and, and I know it will continue for both of us, but also just grateful that someone can come in and they're fearful that they're going to lose their car and that I can tell them there's another option. You don't have to file bankruptcy. You don't necessarily have to go borrow money from your family, which can be embarrassing and challenging and that there is a resource in MJFLA and I'm proud of what you've accomplished in the last 14, 15 years, and you should be very proud too. And I, I appreciate your time today. And I know whatever you do next is going to be remarkable and wish you the, the best of luck. And I look forward to continuing to work with you, but also look forward to working with Anne in the future. So thank you so much. Well, thank you for this opportunity. It's been great to be able to share about MJFLA and, and, the more people that know about MJFLA, the more people we can help. So your podcast is going to help people too. So thank you. Which is interesting because I, and I, I don't, I, I want to bring this to a conclusion, but so many people think that MJFLA and the, the whole thought of giving free loans is too good to be true <laughs> and, and give interest-free loans. It's not. And, and over the years, sometimes we've struggled with finding people that want to apply and I think what's really exciting as, as you go into retirement and we have Anna on, on the team now that I think more and more people in the community are, are learning about MJFLA and applications are going up and borrowers are going up. And that's a, just a, a very exciting thing. And the, the future is very bright. And thank you for all you've, all you've done. And we will talk soon. Well, thank you. We, yeah, we've been doing a lot of outreach the last couple of years and it's really paid off. We've been able to, to reach more and more people. And, and I, as you said, we're going to reach even more people with, with the new leadership. So it's only going to get better and better. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot.